Well, um, now let's enter finally into what we want. Because if I don't ask you this, I know my community. I'm not like NASA. I make bridges between me and the community as you make with your students and all the people that you talk. They want me to ask you about this. I know them. And it's about something that I want to confront you. It's about the Comet R2 Swan, 2025 R2 Swan. And I found, because they pushed me into that direction, well, we watched it here uh, through telescopes, I, I believe yesterday or two days ago again, and it's m much more far away. But I found at least five confirmed anomalies, and there's another one that I want you to help us all to understand if it's really an anomaly or if it's something um, that it's not an anomaly, you will understand. So the anomalies I found that are confirmed is, one, it, it has a tight orbit for a long period comet. So I, I, without entering in the, the affiliation and the, those uh, technical stuff, it, it has a, a tight orbit. It has no sodium signature. So it has also no sodium tail. It has too much C2, so diatomic carbon, for the sodium that it has or doesn't have. It was discovered just one month before perihelion, which is not common in this type of, of comets and highly suggests a recent activation. So something uh, that was activated recently and not before uh, uh, getting closer to the Earth. And it was reported, I remember this, it was reported signs of fragmentation for a first passage, which is uncommon. And it didn't happen because I remember to compare them with the K1 atlas that really fragmented in three big pieces, at least three big pieces. And the study that I, I read about the, the Swan 2, um, the, the R2 Swan, it didn't show really we couldn't uh, be, uh, get a, a defined fragmentation. And there's a sixth one that is the one that pushed people to ask me to you this. There's a study that was published in the Astronomer's Telegram that shows the, the picture of it having an anti-tail. Um, let me show you the picture, just, just at least one of, of them, so you can have an idea of it. I don't know if you, if you watched it, um, but... No. No, okay. It shows this. This picture. So we, we can see here something very similar to 3 Atlas. I, I will send you the link uh, as soon as we finish. This is right. And All the right. sun is uh, to the upper left? Uh, that's what I, I don't understand here. And I don't understand. What I said to my viewers after studying this was that uh, we know that the anti-tail of 3 Atlas is a real anti-tail. And usually, and I know this because of the, the pictures that people take uh, with telescopes, it's an optical illusion when we see, oh, it's forming an anti-tail. It's kind of, it's like this, you know, and, and it's not really an anti-tail. It looks like, from our perspective, as it looks like with a solar plasma that comes from Sol telescopes, it's two-dimensional. We understand that. But here, they were not, I will send you the link, they were not very clear about it. So I can't say that this is a real anti-tail, as they they claim. They don't claim exactly it's a real anti-tail, but uh, uh, or if it is uh, from the perspective, I don't know what to do it. I don't. I'm not a scientist. Uh, I will send you the link. I, I thought you you were aware I mean, of it. What is most unusual about uh, this particular one? I mean, the claim is that it belongs to the solar system, but. It comes from a very large distance. Uh, you know, it's uh, coming from the edge of the Oort cloud, the, the, the outskirts of the solar system. And it's, uh, you know, it could be interstellar as well. It's on the borderline of being interstellar. because We can't really tell very clearly. Um, the point is that uh, such objects that, ha that come from far away, uh, they could potentially be affected by along their path by perturbations uh, from the Jupiter, from other planets, and then if they are bound to the Sun. However, it could also have originated in interstellar space. Uh, it's on the borderline. 
and we just don't have enough um, good information about its uh, uh, orbital parameters to tell. So I think that is extremely unusual that um, we would have two, uh, two of these objects in the inner solar system that are potentially from interstellar space. And um, the, the, the other, uh, well, major difference is that um, it's almost perpendicular to the ecliptic plane. So it goes in a completely different uh, plane, orbital plane, than 3i Atlas. And perhaps um, th there is a reason for having two planes uh, being perpendicular to each other. So it's definitely worth monitoring and, and checking if there are any additional anomalies associated with it. Yeah, and they they don't have too much um, information, spectrum tree information about it. They have this about the sodium, which is an anomaly that is known, but they yeah. don't have too, too, too much data about it. And as it was discovered right before the, the perihelion, it was a, a sudden uh, discovery. It's associated because of the characteristics. I was comparing with tables, comparing with other comets and even with Halley Bob, with Halley, with Neo Eyes that are more into that segment of uh, of processed uh, yeah. comets. Mm, it has different uh, characteristics as well. It's yeah. worth it at least for you to check the data that uh, that oh, is on. I'm very curious to know more about it. And now, yeah. uh, when it was uh, announced, I checked whether it could have originated from 3 i Atlas because I thought maybe it's a piece of three atlas, but it looks like the two never came close, uh, and the, the the orbital plane uh, planes are perpendicular. And you know, if you have a situation with technological device, uh, you would expect more than one, and very often uh, one is uh, used for uh, distracting attention from the other one. Uh, yes. And so th this happens quite a lot. Uh, so we should keep our eyes open and and uh, get as much data on this one as well. I think that would be yeah, really interesting. A, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. There's another thing that we we all didn't care too much uh, at the beginning, but now I I realize that all the times that I watched it, it has no tail. It has a, a strong glow, a green glow uh, uh, coma. No, and, and now people realize that it goes in kind of parallel to to three I Atlas. I didn't uh, give too much importance to that because of the distance. But what uh, attracted me the most was that it, it should uh, have been activated, according to, to, to them, activated uh, in a moment that was exactly the moment that three Atlas was getting closer to the Earth as well. Well, I leave it here and, uh, and then we... Yeah, when three atlas came closest to the sun, you mean? Yeah, yeah. it will. Uh, three atlas will get closest to Earth on December nineteenth. So I, I'm really hoping we will get a lot of data in the coming month, uh, both from ground-based telescopes, because the International uh, Asteroid Warning Network um, uh, is coordinating a campaign between uh, uh, actually uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, the 27th of January, and there will be hundreds of uh, telescopes around the globe looking at three atlas. So hopefully we learn much more about it from this data and the upcoming month should be quite exciting.